Hi guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be introducing Inspector Ghoul. So, um, you will need to have read up to page 10 at least of the play. Every play is different, um, so I'm not entirely sure what version you have. So, um, the version I have, it's pages 9 to 10 where um, the inspector arrives and he says, yes sir, only recently transferred. So we're only reading up to that line there. So it's important that you've read um, the beginning of Act 1 up to there. So today's learning outcomes will be to understand what is happening at the beginning of Act 1, so up to pages um, either 9, 10 or 11, to practice writing well-structured PEE paragraphs. We're not going to focus on PEACE, -E, which is point evidence, analysis, context and effect on the reader just as yet because it's important that we focus on understanding point evidence explanation first and get doing that really well before we move on to something that's harder. Also we're going to focus on how JB Priestley presents Mr Burling in Act 1, those pages that I said earlier so up to um pages 9 10 or 11 so just a reminder that there are different plays um so we've got this one here and we've got this one here same play but the page numbers are just different okay so before we get started i want you guys to answer three questions and these questions will be obviously about the page numbers that I wanted you guys to read. The three questions I'll put up for you guys to see. Write down five things that you can remember about an Inspector Calls. Task two, what year did J.B. Priestley publish the play? And task three, what is a post-war drama? I want you to pause this so you can write down your answers. After you've written your answers, I want you to unpause it and then I'll give you my answers five things about an inspector calls it. one is set in Bromley in northern England is a post-war drama written after World War II the play is about a family who contributed to the death of a young girl named Eva Smith also known as Daisy Renton the whole play is actually set in the Burling household and it is set in 1912 and of course it is written by JB Priestley task two JB Priestley Published an Inspector Calls in 1945. In task 3, a post-war drama is a drama that is set after World War II. So the question for today's lesson is, how does J.B. Priestley present Mr. Burling at the beginning of Act 1? So we're going to focus on that question and that's what we're going to be writing our PEE paragraphs about. So three things to remember. We're going to explore Mr. Burling's attitudes. We're going to understand why he acts in such a way. And we need to be able to analyse quotations and choose quotations that are relevant to the text and to the question that we're going to be answering. So now I've got four questions that I'd like you to answer. These four questions are just to recap what you've learned at the beginning of Act 1. I'll put these questions up for you to do. And what I want you to do is pause this whilst the questions are there and I want you to complete the questions and then I'll show you my answers. Okay, so now we're gonna go for the answers. So number one, what impression have you got of Mr. Burling from reading these pages? Mr. Burling is presented as a hard-headed, egotistic businessman. Number two, who is getting married? The two people getting married are Sheila and Gerald. Sheila is Mr. Burling and Mrs. Burling, Sybil's daughter, and Gerald, Gerald Croft, is a fiance and they are to be wed. Number three, why would Mr. Burling be happy that Sheila and Gerald are getting married? So Mr. Burling is happy that Sheila and Gerald are getting married because Gerald's family owns a manufacturing business and they are competitors of Mr. Burling. And lastly, what indicates that the Berlin family are wealthy? I've got three reasons to answer this question. Number one, Mr. Berlin's family are wealthy because he owns his own business. Secondly, they have a maid named Edna. Third, Mr. Berlin was Lord Mayor in the past. So now that we've answered those questions, we have a better insight 
into the Burling household and how Mr. Burling is. But we need to dig a little bit deeper. So I have another task for you guys to do. I want you to draw a mind map and I'll put one on the screen for you guys to see. I want you to put Mr. Burling's name in the middle of the mind map. I want you to write down words and phrases you used to describe him. I want you to do a minimum of four. I'm going to put an example up on the screen for you guys to see. Now I'm going to show you guys what I have got down. Okay, so now we've done that, we're starting to answer the question slowly. But what we're doing is we're taking it apart to make it a little bit easier. We need to find some quotations to use as evidence. So we've done the first bit, which is the point, because we've directly answered the question and we've said how he's being presented. Now we need some quotations to support our point. So what I want you guys to do next is I want you to choose three of the words or phrases from the Mr. Burling mind map task. And we need to find three quotes that support each of these words or phrases. Let me give you guys an example. So if you're finding it difficult to find quotes, ask yourself, does this quote show that he's experienced, articulate or successful? If it doesn't, or you can't explain it, it probably means that you can't use that quote. Now we need to learn how to write an explanation. But to make writing an explanation easier, we need to break it down into three parts. I'm going to choose the word experienced as my example. And I'm going to use the quote, we hard-headed practical businessmen must say something sometime. And we don't guess we've had experience and we know. Now we're gonna break it down into three parts to make it easier for you guys to write a really good explanation. For whatever quotation you've chosen, I want you to write down three things that you've learnt about Mr. Burling. Let me give you guys an example. Using your quote, write down three things you've learnt about him. Now, writing our explanation will be a lot easier because we've taken some information from the quote to get us started. Now, all I do is write down the information that I gathered from the previous task where I broke down the quote. What this does is make sure that you don't repeat yourself because sometimes it gets a little bit difficult when writing an explanation because you keep saying what you said previously or you might even repeat what you said in, the, in your point. I'm going to show you guys what my PEE paragraph looks like now. Once you've done that, you should have ended up with a successful PEE paragraph. You have your point, your evidence, and your explanation that we broke down using the task that we did. I hope this was useful to you guys, especially some people that were struggling with writing PEE paragraphs. But remember, if you want to write peace paragraphs, which is a little bit more detailed, leave a comment and I'll make a video about how to create successful peace paragraphs. But I do hope this video was useful. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to message me on social media. Take care. Bye.